Okay, I want to be clear from the very start. Diablo 4 is the first Diablo game I've ever played. Uh, I don't have in-depth knowledge of the game, and a lot of this information I'm giving could be wrong, as it's just fairly crafted. But I still want to do this guide, as I think this is really cool, and people should know how to do this. Alright, so the burst down live will be using a bone spear build, which of course uses corpse centrals for the increased crit damage and crit chance, bone stones for the increased crit chance as well, uh, corpse explosion for the increased damage with corpse eater, bone splinters to generate some essence, and then finally blood mist to aid f uh, two one-shot attacks during the encounter. Right. Uh, my talents uh, look like this. I will have a link to that uh, build in the description. I'm not sure if anyone actually, you know, looks through the builds from like the video and uh, pauses. Like I'll never do that. It's so much comfier from a guide, like from a website. So you know, might as well. The only thing to note is that the only thing to know from the Paragon Ball, which changes how you play the game, is again Flesh Eater, uh, where you consume five corpses before the burst damage to do a lot more damage. Nothing else really changes how you play the game. Gear-wise, this is why I was using. The helm, uh, the unique helm, isn't that necessary for the build, but it does give you physical damage and crit uh, damage with bone skills, which normal helms do, uh, cannot drop with. So it is still probably better than any other helm, or any regular helm you can get. For the chest and the waist, Although these normal attacks don't really do that much damage, so you don't really need that good of a chest and waist, and you can use some stats like physical damage up and bone damage up or int, but again, more defense makes it more comfier. Uh, as imprints, you want to use the armor one, because armor is really strong, and you can either use the bone stone one, or you can use the one that gives you a huge shield whenever you hit an elite. Uh, the imprinted one on higher level gives a huge shield actually, and it's probably better than the bone storm one, but as neither one of them is necessary and I already have this roll on this, I didn't want to change. If you're doing the cheese, you'll be standing still for most of the fight, so your boots don't really matter. The only thing that's important is essence cost reduction. The rest can be int or something else. If you're doing a uh, little to legit, you do though, like you really want to get the movement speed and max ev charges because they are really helpful. As an imprint, I would use the critical strikes give you increased movement speed as well as you know. You don't have too many mobility options as a necromancer. As offensive aspects, we'll be using the bone spear one, with the corpse tendrils one, the osphat essence one, and the max resource one, right? The, you really want to be using the Bone Spear one on your two-handed sword. And I was using the Ossified one on my amulet. But you might want to change the Corpse Tendrils one there, especially if you are lower geared, so you can more easily hit the crit cap. Finally, we'll be using the Lucky Hits Give You Essence one on the last ring. This is really helpful to help you with the Essence Regeneration. As a final note regarding the Legendary Post, you might want to use the one which gives you more power when you stand still and use that instead of the primary resource one or if you have really good uh, pair of gloves but otherwise lacking gear you might want to drop down the essence one uh, but again I'm not sure I don't have good enough gear to test this out but there's it's probably better than the primary resource, uh, primary resource one and there's a small chance that it's better than the Essence one, right? If you have good gloves, yes, on your gloves, you can get the primary resource on a lucky hit instead. Otherwise, on the gloves, you really want the Bone Spear ranks and the Crit Strike chance. As the final perk, or final two perks, I would uh, want to have either the lucky hits grant you primary resources, the Crit Damage, or Attack Speed. Attack speed is really good as it might allow you to get one or probably one more bone spear in during the burst phase, which is a lot of damage. On the weapon, 
and the rings of course, we really want vulnerability damage. On the weapons we of course want crit damage on bone skills and just crit damage. Final one, Int is probably, just anything is good, Int is probably the best one, right? And then on the rings, again vulnerability damage, really important, and so is crit chance, so we can reach 100% crit chance. Uh, after those, just anything that gives you more damage. Essence is max, maximum essence is really good, right? Uh, th after that, anything that gives you damage, like crit, uh, crit damage with bone skills, or anything that works. My rings are currently missing one line of damage, like this one has resource generation, and this one has maximum health instead. Resource generation is arguably useful, but it doesn't increase damage done, right? Which we want to do. And then on the amulet, we want essence cost reduction and anything else that helps. Movement speed is really important if you're trying to do this legit. Other than that, anything that increases your damage in any way, right? I'm not sure which one's the best one, but just do, just grab anything that increases your damage. Finally, for your decorations, you want to be using the skull ones for armor, the green ones for vulnerability or crit damage for against vulnerable targets. And usually you want to be using Topaz Topazes in the regular game, but Lilith doesn't do CC, so you want to be using the rubies for health instead. My gear is pretty good, but it could be better, right? I only like my weapon is really good, but it's only 80 uh, 800. My waist and chest don't have too many damage rolls. My ring, both rings are missing one damage roll each. And imperfectly balanced ink, I'm not sure if that's the best one, but you know, right? And instead of movement speed, I could have even more damage, like to fully commit to the cheese. But then again, otherwise, it's pretty good, actually really good, right? But it's not like one of the best ones. I've seen many people with a lot better gear. Oh yeah, and for Elixir, Elixir, you want to be using the one that increases your. Oh, it's not this one. The one that looks like this and increases your max resources by fifty. All right, so. When the encounter starts, you want to be standing at the edge of the ring. I usually use like this pile of like this pile circle over here and the triangle to somewhat align myself at the edge immediately when the encounter starts. For the first phase, your go oh, for the first part of the phase, your goal is to get here to 65% HP. And while doing that, uh explode four corpses to prep out for the burst DPS phase. After that, you'll be popping your fifth corpse, popping uh, using corpse tendrils, and using bone storm, even before like she lands down. After that, you can immediately start blasting uh, bone spears where she's going to spawn. If you don't kill her during the first burst phase, uh, she will do the triangle attack. And after that, you have to kill her before she jumps up again. If you don't, the encounter will bug out. And she'll just constantly do the uh, wave attack that one switch to you. And even if you do get her to 1 HP, she won't die until you die. And then the HP drops to 0%. Amazing. So what you can do is stand in the middle of the attack, immune through it with blood mist, and then throw two or three more bone spears at her and hope for the best. If you killed her, congratulations. That's... 90 to 95 percent of the encounter done. The second phase is so much easier than the first phase. While Lilith is changing to her second form, we want to be popping down four corpses to prep out another flesh eater, and then position ourselves somewhere around here, right? So our bone spears plane to scan again hit her for lots of damage. When she's about to spawn, pop the fifth corpse, uh, pop corpse tendrils, and do mega damage on her. As long as you do enough damage. She will just skip, uh, skip mechanics, and she'll immediately go into the platform breaking phase. You don't have to immune through this, but I would suggest you do, as it's the timing is not that hard, and you will be in a really good spot to continue doing damage on her. When you see her do the line and it turns red, that's when I'd uh, when I'd pop, pop blood mist, and then just stay in it for the whole duration. Don't try to be a pro gamer and you know. Get out of blood mist the same you think that the one shot kill mechanic ends, right? Then just keep doing damage and then follow her. And you actually do have to do the second two mechanics 
but it's not that hard. You during the first two burst windows, you should have done more than enough damage to keep going on. Like if you could get to second phase with the burst during the first phase, you have more than enough damage to do the second phase. Keep popping uh, corpse tendrils and just kill her. That's easy. The most important part regarding cheese is most likely the positioning during the first phase and the aiming. So you hit as many of the splinters coming from the bone spear as possible. Yes, again, with that legendary power on our two-handed weapon, they do a lot of damage. So if you know you hit two of them or you hit five of them, the damage difference is huge. So that's about it. Hopefully, hopefully this answers most of your questions. I will have a link to the build in the description. Anyways, I hope this has been helpful and thank you for watching. By the way, as an extra, this build is also really good at deleting world bosses. Like, it doesn't matter, but then again, it's fun.